This is Dr. Surya Prakash Vankina, consultant at Radiation Oncology, Mahatma Gandhi Cancer Hospital, Vishakapatna. You know, in this podcast, uh, we will be discussing about uh, latest uh, advances, updates, and clinical trials in, uh, in oncology. Uh, cervix cancer is one of the leading ca- cause of cancer-related mortality across the world, and recently, uh, a, a new clinical trial is published in the Lancet Journal regarding a new ca- uh, treatment regimen for cervical cancer. Today, we have Dr. Karnujaran Patro. HOD and Clinical Director, Radiation Oncology, Mahatma Gandhi Cancer Hospital, uh, Vishakapatnam, to discuss about uh, the, uh, the latest updates uh, in cervix cancer. Good Hi. morning, Dr. Patro. Hi. There is a uh, recently uh, trial called Interlace Trial has been published in the Lancet uh, Journal regarding uh, a new update in the treatment of uh, cervix cancer. Can you tell something about this trial? So, if you see, the cervix cancer is the most common in the developing countries and uh, um, uh, last, last year diagnosed around more than 6 lakh population diagnosed with a cervix cancer. More than half of the population died. The standard of care regimen is CTRP, chemoidate therapy, colorway, bracket therapy, the standard protocol. Um, but, uh, can we increase the more uh, cure rate in the form of better, better, better treatment, better treatment, of better treatment progress in the survival and overall survival. So this is a trial, uh, interless trial. So it is a uh, multi subject trial and uh, led by 32 countries. Uh, so this is a, they have given uh, NSCT, uh, New Orleans Chemotherapy, followed by Chemo Radiation. Can you tell us in detail about the treatment uh, regimen in this uh, trial? What are the chemo drugs used? How is this different from uh, standard chemo radiation? So usually standard chemo uh, chemo radiation we use chemo radiation therapy followed by bracket therapy. During radiation therapy we use uh, cisplatin 40 mg per meter square weekly for five weeks. But in this protocol, in the experimental arm, they used six weeks of packet excellent carboplatin uh, weekly regimen. See, at, uh, six weeks after six weeks, seventh week they started the uh, chemo radiation arm. So one arm is experimental arm where new treatment chemotherapy up for six weeks patriarchal carbocating. In other arm, uh, uh, only uh, chemo radiation arm, both followed by bracket. Okay. Uh, what are the results of this study? So if you see the results of this study, they so uh, this uh, it is around sixty seven months median follow. In 67 months median follow-up, the progress of the primary endpoints for the uh, six, no, primary endpoints are the progress in the survival and overall survival. And so, uh, if you see, there is a 8% benefit in progress in the survival and overall survival. And if you see the hazard function in progress in the survival, there is a um, um, uh, 35% uh, reduction. In uh, progression of the level and of 40% in the other function in uh, reduction in uh, overall. So, uh, based on this uh, inferences, uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses of this study? If you see the strengths of the study, it is a mostly uh, it is a multi centered study. The radiotherapy is a centralized evaluation policy. And uh, mostly entity population analysis, in the, uh, IT population uh, analysis, integrated okay. uh, analysis, um, and uh, not is a proper funding by uh, go- mostly government fund, uh, government fund, government fund, and uh, more people from 500 populations and. Uh, uh, with uh, some, uh, sensitive care to 0.5 and power 80 percent power. So if you see the strength is good, uh, uh, but the, uh, it is a median uh, over uh, median, median follow up 70 uh, 67 months. So uh, um, if you see the progress in the survival over the survival in the first one year two year though graphs are slightly hogging each other. 
but in the later five years, uh, you see the graphs are away from the etc. So, and another thing is that the NACT arm, there is a 17, um, uh, NACT arm is the 12% uh, uh, now, sorry, uh, in CDRT arm it is a 12% standard analysis, but that is a slightly less in the NACT arm. Do you think uh, this trial is practice changing? Still, if you see, uh, CPRT is the standard of um, uh, standard of care in the cancer service. But if you uh, think of adding NACT with, uh, to CPRT arm, so we cannot uh, universally um, uh, adopt all those stages. If you see, it is a stage in 2008. Yes. So one B with notes. Now it is stage three. Is stage three one. Three C one. C one. So we should not misinterpret that one B also getting benefited. It is a benefited and mostly a mostly the advanced stage. stage advanced stage. stage. So if you the recent uh, stage uh, what we follow on the service stage. So it is a onwards three three stage three C onwards. Uh, uh, like stage 4, it is good to give NACT or NACT followed by CTRT um, according to the trial of work. But we, it is not universally to all states. What is the toxicity profile in this clinical trial? Whether uh, there are more toxicities or with NACT is it tolerable, uh, especially when it comes to our, uh, our population in a low resource setting? So, NACT, those, those people who have received NACT are. Definitely, hematological toxicity will be there. The uh, work was there, and slightly quality of life also slightly worse uh, in the NSCR. But when you see the benefit is more, and um, at least a eight percent benefit in the PFSM was uh, arm, uh, experimental arm, we can uh, uh, start the stage uh, nodal positivity and the stage four tumors. We can go ahead with the uh, NACT followed by uh, CTRT. I cannot say directly it is a practice changing, but uh, it, it may take uh, time uh, to adopt all these things because we are uh, already preoccupied with the CTRT uh, mind. So, adopting NACT slowly it may evolve, evolve, or we require more Indian data. And uh, though if in this data, though India is uh, one of the center for the things, but Indian population is in the two percent now. And most of the population from the UK, which is the developed countries. Yes. So we need a population from the developing countries like South Asian countries and African countries. We need more data from there, them rather than uh, in uh, comparing with the developed developed countries. Yes. Uh, recently uh, the there is a comparison between the uh, interlay study and the embrace study uh, that the outcomes are not uh, uh, significantly different between uh, trial arms. So what is your inference on this? See, if you see the embrace study and interlay study, the almost similar in, in uh, uh, CT ATM and in experimental arm in interlay they are almost similar. So that's why we, I have, we need more studies in the developing countries. That is, uh, so they have to do the more studies in the development countries. So in, if you do the development countries in the study, so the cost, the time, the quality of life, adherence to the chemotherapy, newer joint chemotherapy, polar bear radiotherapy, all things are very meaningful things you have to evaluate. So we need a study in the developing countries. Because if most of the patients in the central study are UK studies. So, if you are giving hematological chemotherapy, definitely your that time hematological toxicity, quality of life. So, with one two percent variation, whether we should adopt it or not, we have to analyze ourselves. So, but adherence chemotherapy. So, if patient suppose in Indian setting, if you ask the patient go for new management chemotherapy and patient develop all the hematological toxicities and quality of life, and at that time patient is in the total critic to take the CTRT arm. So, adherence to the CTRT arm also very tough. So, 
all these things to keep in mind we need a study in the developing countries not in the metros it is a type and type of uh, cities we have to um, do properly properly randomization we do and do then we can tell that you that uh, so maybe you would say that uh, this trial results uh, can be adapted for patients who are well informed and understand that they have to uh, take 6 weeks of uh, initial chemotherapy then again one and a half months it's another five to six weeks of radiotherapy then brachytherapy so totally uh, the three months of treatment three months this may not be uh, logistically feasible for uh, majority of for patient population so for majors majority of the population um, uh, so treatment dropouts will be more so that in developed countries like uh, indian and african countries where so uh, starting from the logistic issues staying travel transport uh, food uh, all these things we have if you take care uh, and are uh, small benefits compared to the embrace and uh, endless so everything changing the policy it requires uh, time and uh, with uh, some uh, studies after that we can analyze So, to our last question, what is your uh, inference uh, from the study? Will you treat any patients with the interlaced regimen, or you would wait for uh, more studies to come? I mean, uh, my question is very special. Are there any subset of patients whom you uh, uh, use the interlaced regimen? If I, if somebody asks me, what you are going to practice? First thing I will do is take the cost and time uh, consideration. And adherence to the treatment. If patient comes to me, if patient asks how many days he will take. Even sometimes people are not agreeing for the two months and two and a half months to take the two months within sixty days treatment. People are not most of the people are not time adherence to taking the treatment, bracket and everything. But if you put another one month, six weeks of uh, adding time extra and. Uh, It was uh, similar benefit from the interlace and uh, embrace. So I feel in the time being I can plan CRT or till stage three. Uh, uh, But when there is a high nodal burden, those having the uh, stage uh, or a uh, rectum bladder involvement, I I, uh, I will consider for the. Uh, Okay. So, okay, Dr. Bhatra, thanks for your time. So, thanks, Dr. Sudhir Das.